second of four previews here from Frickers and Van Wert as we're joined by the Crestview Knights. Andy Lynch alongside the veteran head coach, Jeremy Best. I don't know what point you cross over from being just a normal coach to a veteran coach, but I think you've made it. Uh, time. Does that. Yeah, <laughs> lots just, and lots just, of time. Just time, yeah. It gets by. It is hard to believe this is year 16 that, uh, mm -hmm. that I've been here and we've been here. Um, you know, Coach Bowen's been with me all those years, so... Here we are, back for another one. Do you like this time of year? You still have another week before your games will get kicked off or tipped off, I guess, in basketball. I do. It's it's really a strange dynamic. You know, it's exciting and frustrating and stressful all at the same time. You're starting a new season and trying to get guys, um, you know, back back in the in the swing of things of basketball and prepping for different things and making sure you have all all the, the necessary things in that you need to have in and. You really don't know until you play your first game or two. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it is. It's exciting um, to get going again. Your first game will be Van Ward. It'll be next week now, not Correct. this week. And it will be on TV 44 as well. We picked that. We were going to do it anyway. But it, it's a nice opener for both you guys. But getting that extra week, you know, what are you looking forward to this weekend? Will you go and, and do some scouting? Oh, I'm sure we'll, we'll definitely scout. But I think the biggest thing is, uh, you know, it just gives us some other pr some practice time yeah. and um, to get ready to play our opening weekend. And we'll have a double weekend that open opening weekend as well. So it is nice to have a little more practice time to prep for that. Um, but, again, you know, I think our guys, by that time, they'll be ready to play and will be tired of practicing. And some of them probably are tired of practicing now. So <laughs> doesn't take much for some It doesn't guys. take much. I was yeah. one of those guys. Yeah. So. I'm sure you weren't. You Never. loved practice. I love practice. <laughs> the head coach has to say that. That's so right. Speaking of those football guys, you've got about six of them yep. that are on the varsity. How quickly do you see their legs get ready for basketball? It's yeah. completely different. Yeah, I think, I think each, you know, you, you, each one is different. You know, some – some grasp and, and gravitate a little bit different. They're, all their bodies react differently. It is a totally different set of conditioning, and you, you mentioned it getting the legs underneath you, but just getting the timing and, and the, 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 all the things that are different about one sport to the next, um, it does take some time, and, but I know our guys are, they don't think about that. They're just practicing and trying to get ready and being very coachable, and, and I like the direction we're headed here in our first about week of practice. I've seen some interesting things you guys have done on Twitter. Uh, taking a test, was that on Thanksgiving? There, there was some classroom work. Uh, there's been all-night activities as yeah, well. We, we like the well-rounded athlete, Andy. <laughs> we, we, we try to, to keep them on their toes. But basically what that was is we, we did what we call a lock-in. We call it the night-in. Okay. And we, we did it a handful of years ago and just didn't take the time to do that again the last several years. You know, we always use time as an excuse. but. We went ahead and did that, and, and all 27 of our guys, we locked them in the gym with us all night long and, and did some team-building exercises and activities and uh, spent the night on the Ray Etzler gymnasium floor and, and uh, got up the next day and, and went and had a scrimmage. And, and, but it was good. The team, the team concepts were really good, and I think our, our guys had a lot of fun, not to mention that Coach Springer and I um, were ping-pong champs. Doubles ping-pong? Doubles ping pong. Wow, that is intense. We'll have to talk to the guys. Who'd you beat? Who was the final? You name them, we beat them all. <laughs> Taking on Drew, all covers. Yeah, Drew Klein, he, he, he didn't like getting beat, but it's part of the deal, Drew. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yep. Coach Jerry Vest joining us here on the Frickers Preview Show. Coming up, we will talk with the Knights rival, Lincoln View, as well as Van Wert, who will be Crestview's opening uh, opponent in a couple weeks. Uh, talking about this football team coming off a great season. Uh, basketball last year made it to the district finals. You guys have had some good athletic success mm -hmm. over the years, but this group in particular, that's got to have you excited for this year. It is, and I, it's the cliche that it gets contagious, yeah. and I think there's some truth to that, you know, and, and we are fortunate. We've got a lot of athletes that are playing multiple sports, and that's where it starts. Our school our size can't sustain or maintain really good athletics from one season to the next if your good athletes don't transfer from one sport sure. to the next. So, you know, we obviously really support our football team and our, and our baseball team and all our other sports as well, and, that's, and I think that's vice versa. We have a really good working relationship with the other head coaches, and I think our guys, uh, all our athletes see that, and that's special when you can have that because we're all pulling for the same thing, which is, you know, Crestview. Sure. Looking ahead to the Northwest Conference, what do you expect out of the league this year? Well, you know, la last year it was really senior heavy. Right. I, I think I, I took a peek at last year's all-conference, uh, the results of that, and it was almost overwhelmingly 90 to 95% seniors that have graduated. 
However, there were really a lot of good young players that were in the conference last year. So those guys obviously are going to be called upon in new roles and new situations for all the teams in the conference. And I think it's going to be very competitive. I thought it was very good last year. But I know a lot of guys graduated. But um, I think the league will be extremely competitive um, all the way through, as it usually is. Only two seniors last year. You got a good group of five this year. What, what's their leadership style? What do you see when you see these seniors? Well, I think you, you need all kinds. We, we've talked before, you know, I don't, I don't know that you always need captains, okay. but you need leaders. Yeah. And I think you need leaders in different areas. And whatever those areas need be, a di you know, all, all coaches look for different things out of their leaders, uh, whether it be vocal, whether it be through uh, your actions, whether you're quiet and you take care of things in the locker room, you take care of things in the hallway, um, positive with the other teammates. Those are all, all kinds of, of characteristics that you look for in your leaders. And I think we've got five guys in our seniors that, that can do those things, but we also have some underclassmen who have been around two, three years now that lead us every bit as much as, as our upperclassmen. And I think if you can mesh that all together, um, you don't always have to count on one fella. You yeah. can count on, on, the, on the core group as, as a whole, and that's definitely what we're looking for. Is that something you enjoy, seeing those different roles and those different things come together? I, I do, and, and that's sometimes it's, you know, as coaches, you can't always, you, you can't assign a leadership right. role. I mean, you can try to do that, and you can talk about it, and you can model it, but it's it, something I think that really evolves with a team over time, and the more you talk about it and the more you model it, it helps. But, you know, some guys uh, are just more comfortable in that role than others, and that's okay. Um, in today's day and age in society, you know, we, we, we all hear that, that kids and, and, and people in general, you know, it's instant gratification in the society we live in. But hopefully our guys are going to buy into the process that we talk about on a daily basis. And um, we, you'll see those leaders emerge as we roll through the season and um, that will control our team. Big month of December for Crestview. Uh, we'll have the games against Van Wert on WTLW, also the game against Delphi St. John's uh, right after Christmas, before you really get heavy into league play, start of next year. Right. What do you expect out of that first month? Uh, do, do you have kind of a marker post for the season where you say, we've we got to be here by this point? Well, I, you know, I don't, I don't think you, you put that unnecessarily on wins and losses. I mean, sure. I think we have, I have an idea of of maybe what, what we might be able to do as we roll through game one through four and five, you know, okay. as far as what we want to be able to do. You know, obviously, nobody's really very crisp and all that sharp at the beginning of the year. Right. And that's an area that, um, you know, we, we, we might need to address a little earlier than others. But, you know, hopefully our guys are always going to defend. And I think if you can start with that, mm -hmm. you're going to generate some, some different ways to put the ball in the basket through your defense. And hopefully our guys will continue to buy into that and, and kind of ease the pain sometimes when you're struggling in the half court where, you know, the ball maybe isn't going in the basket. Um, but I think those are some things that we definitely will hang our hats on as on the defensive end, as always. Yeah, you always do. Coach Jeremy Best, Crestview Knights, when we return, we'll talk with two more of those seniors right here on WOSN from Frickers. that who's the loud clapper all right David Etzler let's do him some clapping there I thought it was Tony Springer myself he's a pretty big clapper. we're joined by Trevor Gibson next to me and Derek Stout down at the end Derek uh, let's start with you that walk-in you weren't great at ping pong but you had a good night I hear yeah it was uh, a lot of team building uh, activities we did some uh, classroom work sat through a PowerPoint ping pong badminton you name it it was a fun night what was the classroom work well, uh, we were just writing some uh, letters and reflecting and just talking about the upcoming season. Awesome. Well, as a senior, what are you thinking in your upcoming season? Well, it feels different being a senior, I guess. Uh, I'm just uh, trying to give it all I have, and I'm trying to not have any regrets by the time my last game comes. Trevor Gibson didn't get a chance to go to the lock-in. I'm yeah. sure the guys were... Uh, Hoping Bumped, you felt better. Yeah. You were sick, right? Yeah, yeah I was sick. Yeah, uh, I missed a good opportunity, but uh, That's okay. it's fine. They can live without me sometimes. <laughs> do you have to do a lock-in by yourself somewhere? 
No, I don't okay. think I have Makeup walk-in, okay, yeah. that's good. Senior season as well, Yeah. how are you feeling right now? Uh, I mean, I'm just trying to set a path for the younger kids, you know, give them a good opportunity, follow the steps and do what we do, Christy, play Christy basketball and stuff. You guys got another week still till you're playing, week and a couple days, is, is that hard? You just want to be out there? I mean, yeah, we want to be out there, but we still got a lot of things to crisp up and stuff. And the coaches, they watch a lot of film. They, they nitpick. They find what we need to work on. We uh, get to it in practice. Derek, one more scrimmage to go against Kaleida. What do you think your team needs to kind of fine tune in that final scrimmage? Well, uh, I think we really need to just uh, continue working on our chemistry on the court. I think we have great chemistry off the court, but right now we still need to uh, just figure out a way to work better as a unit and as a whole on the court. Second team, all Northwest Conference last year. How long does that take to get in rhythm on the court generally in your experience? Well, I mean, at the beginning of the season, it's usually, uh, I, I kind of start off a little slow, but as the season progresses, I really try to find my rhythm and uh, really get in a groove. Do you guys have a favorite drill that Coach Best uh, has? Something you guys say, here we go, we want to do this. Hustle back. Probably. What is that? Uh, it's like a, it's like a, odd situation where like it's like three on two or something and someone runs in and you have to play and it's kind of like a three on three or four on four okay, or something yeah. so it's fun yeah it's not hard yeah but a lot of hard drills i'm sure as well oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> who's the biggest eater on the team we always want to know that we're frickers biggest who can put eater? down the most wings uh probably trevor honestly I, I put my money on trevor right there yeah i could probably i could probably eat a couple all right maybe that's coming afterwards uh, a little <laughs> contest forget the ping pong we're gonna have an eating contest <laughs> and crest who's ready for it. when we return we'll talk to two more of the seniors we are here at frickers on wsn <laughs>